Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker. If our paths have not crossed, boom, good to meet you. In this quiz on network automation, we're going to have, I think, 10 questions at the CCNA level regarding network automation, starting with question number one. Now, before we jump into that first question, if you have not already done so, make it easy for yourself to find me. Just click on subscribe. If you want the bell notification, that's totally up to you. I've got a CCNA playlist right here on YouTube that's like 150 plus videos, all free. And I've got a quiz playlist as well. It's the recordings of our quizzes that we do every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific. So if you want to join a quiz, set your calendar and I'll see you at 11 o'clock next Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific for the live quiz. All right, without further ado, here is question number one. It is multiple select, so choose at least two answers. Which of the following could be used as southbound APIs? Right out of the gate. Uh, and I thank you for the one vote for Keithernet. That's fantastic. So we talk about application programming interfaces. Just to be clear, a great way. I'm talking about super great way of remembering northbound and southbound APIs is think of having a controller in the middle. And if it's communicating with us, like the admins and our apps and things that we use to, to you know, identify what we want to have happen, that would be using northbound APIs, because it's like above. And then if that controller is talking with like network edge devices and stuff like that, it would be using southbound because it's down below. Southbound APIs as that controller talks to those networking devices. And that's that's really what it means. And there's a lot of different choices here for, a, well, here we go. Here's OpenFlow and ResConf and NetConf and Keythernet hasn't quite made the standard yet. All right, moving on. <laughs> here we go. Uh, let's see who's on the podium. Or uh, who's at the top? Proud Owl. Fearless, followed by those other four. I'm glad everybody's here. I'm having a good time. Here's question number two. Which configuration management tool uses manifest files that have a .pp extension? Now, as a CCNA candidate, we do not have to be masters of Puppet, a puppet or chef or Ansible, but it would be good to recognize that these are some tools that can be used for network automation, for management and provisioning. And Puppet is certainly one of the three that they call out on the CCNA blueprint. All right, here's question three of 10. What is the benefit at the end of the day? What is the benefit of a software development kit as part of DNA Center? In the office hour, which is every every 10 o'clock every Saturday on my Discord server, uh, the topic was network automation. We covered a lot of these topics, and you're always welcome to join. It is free uh, every Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Adjust that for whatever time zone you're in, and we'd love to go ahead and see you. All right, here we go. Next question. We're moving through. Question four of 10. It's double points. What is true about this exhibit? Oh. Oh, I know what it is. And you should too, if you're studying for your CCNA. Indeed, it is JSON plain text, and it did not miss a comma. Open and close. That's what something if you remember. If you open with a curly bracket, you need to close. So we have open, 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 open. That's one two, three, and four. And I'm thinking we should have four closes. There's one, two, three, and four. So it's not missing curly brackets. And it's got, uh, oh, it's got an open bracket here. That means there should be a, a closed bracket somewhere. Oh, there's one. Okay, so that's A and A. That looks okay to me. Uh, JSON plain text format. So that's what that is. I would be, you know, the CCNA, I think the blueprint says uh, interpret. Uh, JSON, and this is JSON, and I don't think we have to worry too much about logic as far as like what's going to happen, but I would say syntax is probably absolutely fair game. So let me go ahead and close that, and Rational Turtle is in first place. Here we go, question five of ten. It is multiple select. Good luck, everyone. Which of the following are characters, are characteristics rather, of controller-based networking?
All right. All of these answers are true about controller-based networking. I don't always do that, um, but sometimes I will put all the answers up there as far as all being correct. Let's talk about that just for a moment. Let me move that out of the way. And let me show you something that I labbed up a while ago, and I just recently brought it back up. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> it's funny because <clears throat> it's not all functional at the moment. But this is the dashboard for SD WAN. The benefit of having a controller is that we could have like a headquarter site, and we could have site one, and site two, and site three, and site four, and site five, and site six. And instead of having to go and manage all of those, we have a controller in place. And the world of this SD-WAN solution, that controller is actually made up of three elements, a vSmart, uh, a vBond, and a vManage. That's like the, the controller group, if you will, that's in the cloud. And then that, that, that group of controller objects, they interact with the edge devices, including an edge device here. It might be at headquarters. And then how do we control the network? What we do, this is us. We're at a, a window like this one right here. Bonk. And what we do is we interact with the controllers and tell them what we want to have happen. And then the controllers dictate that out. So if we want to create a new virtual private network or we want to configure a different policy about how logically the VPNs are all set up for this SD-WAN, we don't have to go out there and set up crypto maps or you know crypto profiles. All we need is we tell the controller what we want to want to do. And then it will go ahead and communicate that across the entire enterprise and make it happen. So this would be logically a northbound API that we're using between us and the controller, southbound API between the controller network and the edge devices. It does give us a centralized place to manage everything so we can get our dashboards and look at all the details, make configuration changes at the controller, and then it can push out all those options. Let's see if that covered our answers here. Central point for configuration, yes. Separation of control and data plane. Let's talk about that for a moment. With the controller, the actual decision based on how we want the network to behave and how to build the VPNs and so forth, we indicate that through policy here at the controller network, and then the controller network rolls that out. And so the actual routers themselves are not responsible for you know, how to forward because the, the vSmart tells them all the details about who to build tunnels to. Long story short is that the controller is moved off of the local edge device and moved up to the controller itself. So the controller network or the controller is in charge of making the decisions on how to forward. That's the control plane. And the data plane is all about moving the traffic, which is still the responsibility of the edge device. And I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Good job for everybody. Let's continue on. Uh, question six of 10 reads as follows. It's multiple select. Which of the following are valid REST related HTTP verbs? Good luck, everyone. All right, fantastic. I would, uh, the, the blueprint asks us to be familiar with a few terms like CRUD, which is the you know, ability to create, read, update, and delete. And then the actual HTTP verbs that pull that off, two of those are the correct answers here, <laughs> which is post and get. As you're studying section six, I would take a few moments and just become familiar with a few of the common HTTP verbs. There's not a ton of them that are associated with REST related APIs, including RESTConf. All right, moving forward. Question seven of 10, multiple select. Which of the following are true about application programming interfaces in software defined networking? Well, there we go. We talked about that earlier, <laughs> and this is just the question. I randomize. I use Kahoot. This this quiz is delivered via Kahoot, so I, I build it in Kahoot. I tell it to randomize the answers, or the randomize the answers, also randomize the questions. So if you always put the controller in the middle, now this could be a DNA center. This could be uh, in SD WAN. It could be the control network, which is like vBond, vManage, and vSmart. I'll just put uh, SD WAN. From a controller perspective, logically, we could also put a wireless LAN controller. Those are all, I mean, the logic behind all of them is the same. That's the controller network. So if you and I are running an application to manage and work with and talk to that controller, uh, that would be northbound. And as these controllers communicate with their respective devices, that would be 
southbound, southbound APIs. So northbound is between the applications and the controller. Yep, and southbound is between the controller and the network device or the edge device. Or if it's a wireless LAN controller, it'd be between it and uh, a wireless access point. All right, I think we're almost done. We've got two more questions. If you're just joining and want to join the game, uh, if you want to get in the last two questions, the pin code is down here at the very bottom. Would love to have you. And here we go. Question eight of 10, multiple select. Automation of network management likely causes what? Let's talk about why that's true and what that is. Uh, somebody told me one time that if we go out and we purchase DNA Center, that it is not, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not free. So as a result, the capital expense to buy that initially is going to be increased because we have to get the solution in place. However, once it's in place, imagine a user like Lalo. So Lalo's a user and Lalo calls the service desk and says, you know, I've um, uh, yesterday I was having problems connecting to this app for like an hour, two hours. Going into DNA Center through our management interface, what we could do is we could ask for the telemetry data regarding his session and take a look through, you know, history. And all that data is contained or can be contained in DNA Center. We can say, oh, yeah, right about that time we had this failure or that issue or that problem. And we can help to determine what happened. So buying an SDN solution is going to cause the cost to go, you know, the capital expense to be increased. But operating expenses after it's up, if this guy can do most of the management and change control functions and everything else for our enterprise, you know what? That's going to save us from having to log into 200 you know, routers or switches when we try to troubleshoot or find out what's going wrong because it can all be correlated and, and available. That information can be right at the controller. And that's why those two answers are correct. All right. Most, probably the biggest, biggest expense at most companies is human resources. So anytime we can automate something, uh, it's going to be a lot less expensive over time because we don't have to have the manpower to do all those nitty gritty tasks. All right, let me clear that up. And let's see, I think we're uh, two more questions. We're done. All right, here's question nine of 10. What status code would you expect for a successful post creation? All right, it's a 201. Now, how would you know that? I think that uh, we're all familiar with 400 messages, like 404, not found. Uh, but a success message for a post is 200. When you're studying module six and you're looking at, you know, RESTful APIs that send data in, uh, you might want to be familiar with just the, like the 100 series, the 200 series, 300 series, 400, well, what they mean, that couldn't hurt. All right, moving forward, I think we have one last question. Here it is, question 10 of 10. And welcome everybody to the Keith Barker channel where our goal is to give you tips and tools today to help you get your CCNA. And I was looking over the blueprint keep it close by me all the time. Well, I keep it in the office all the time. I don't travel with it. But uh, it's 6.6, .6, recognize the capabilities of configuration management mechanisms like Puppet, Chef, and Ansible. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm gonna do a little dabbling today. This started three days ago. With Ansible, I wanna get more familiar with it, how I can use it to manage the network and to look for changes on the network. It's great, I, a fantastic tool. And then I discovered a whole bunch of TDWs. And I thought to myself, I know why the average human is never going to use Ansible at the entry level to automate their network. And that's because there's two. <laughs> I had forgotten I put that video in there. That video, by the way, if you want to see an example that you can actually walk through in setting up a very simple Ansible environment. I used a Raspberry Pi for that one, but you can use virtually any Linux platform. And I set up an Ansible environment and did a couple simple automation for a couple basic configurations for a Cisco router and a Cisco switch. So if you want to check that out, that video is in the CCNA playlist. Also, there in the, in the CCNA playlist, there's, a I think, a pretty good video that I made about RESTful APIs, which gives the nice big picture overview of what it is and how it works using RESTConf as an example. So if you're new to YAML, Playbooks, Ansible, or even JSON, those two videos will help you quite a bit in putting all those pieces together. Well, that's question 10 of 10. Let's take a look and see how, how everybody did.
Rational Turtle. You did it. You did it. You crushed it. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, thanks for that. And it, these are the two toughest questions. So out of 10, now that's not bad. Out of 10 questions, we only had two that overall we had the toughest time with. And sometimes we'll do a quiz and there'll be like maybe uh, 12 questions, like eight of them were really hard. Um, but rest, rest related HTTP verbs and also which of the following could be used as southbound APIs. All right, I'm I'm super happy uh, about about you being here, uh, putting in the time and having fun with it. Networking is a blast. It is, and the fundamentals regarding how things work is like Tinker Toys. You just putting putting them together block by block by block. So let me also get some feedback from you if I could, um, and that'd be helpful for me as well. And then right after this stream, which is going to end here in about five minutes, ten minutes, uh, we are going to have in the Discord server, in the above CCNA or beyond CCNA uh, voice room, Donald Robb is going to talk with us about demoing some enhanced features. So if you're interested in some, some great insights on some additional features above and beyond CCNA regarding automation and some on-the-box tools, come and join us in Discord in the above CCNA uh, voice chat room right after I shut down the stream, which will be here in about five five minutes or so. All right, let me go ahead and <laughs> bring up the right camera. Oh, and for everybody who's watching the recorded version, thank you for watching. Check out all the videos in the recorded playlist, and I'll see you in the next video. I've been waiting all my life for someone like you, like you.